many a times students get confused as to what is a wagering contract and what is a speculative contract the, what is the difference between a contract wherein i am betting and a contract wherein i am dealing in shares or i am dealing in commodities so let's understand what is the difference between betting that is wagering and what is the difference between a speculative contract for a transaction to classify as a speculative contract following two conditions need to be followed if these two conditions are not followed that contract will become a wagering contract so let's see what those conditions are first mutual intent to take delivery of the commodity there should be an intention between the parties to take the delivery of the commodity now what do you mean by delivery here delivery means to take the possession of the goods it's the physical possession you physically accept the goods you take physical possession of the goods when you take physical possession of the goods you are said to have taken the delivery of the goods so when the contract is about goods and the goods are being exchanged it is called as a speculative contract but for it to qualify as a speculative contract one more condition needs to be followed the condition is the condition is undertake risk arising from the movement in price now let's say i enter into a contract with you i tell you that 3 months hence i'll purchase rice from you at a price of rupees 120 per kg today the rate of rice let's say is 100 rupees per kg i am of the opinion that possibly after 3 months the price of rice will touch 130 so i am okay purchasing it after 2 months at 120 So what I can do is immediately take delivery from you and sell it in the market. I'll earn rupees ten per kg by doing nothing. I am of that opinion. You think the price of rice after three months will go down from hundred? It will reach ninety. So you are all the more happy because. the price will fall from 100 it will fall to 90 and still i am purchasing it at a higher price so we do a contract here now please remember that you are running a risk what risk you are running if the price moves up let's say the price goes to 130 after 3 months you make a loss you make a loss of 10 rupees because you will have to sell it to me at 120 and i will gain 10 rupees because i'll purchase it at 120 from you and sell it in the market at rupees 130 so you are running a risk that if the prices move up you will have a notional loss however i am also running a risk i run the risk that if prices don't reach 120 let's say they remain 110 or they remain at 100 only or they fall at 90 in all the cases they don't reach 120 after 3 months i will incur a loss i'll purchase them at 120 and sell in the market at 110 i'll incur a loss of 10 i'll purchase them 
at 120 from you and sell them in the market at 100 rupees i'll incur a loss of 20 so we both are running the risk of price movement this is very important both the parties should take delivery there should be a mutual intention that is one party should give delivery the other party should accept delivery of the commodity at the same time both the parties should be running a risk of the price movement if both these conditions are satisfied we can say that it is a contract of speculation in short if you trade in commodities if you trade in shares if you do derivative transactions in the market of futures and options even forwards these all transactions are speculative transactions because you do not know where the prices will move you are contracting today about future you think reliance shares price will go up so you purchase it today you run a risk there what if the prices fall so when you invest in the market when you invest in commodities all these transactions are speculative transactions these are not betting transactions because in betting transactions the commodities don't exchange what gets exchanged is only cash either of the party wins the other party gives him cash here one party benefits the other party loses and one party takes the delivery the other party gives the delivery this is very important here so the goods are exchanged in betting in wagering the cash only the cash is exchanged so this is the difference between wagering contracts and speculative contracts now it is important to understand in wagering contract only cash exchanges thus it is a contract of pure luck it is a contract which is purely on the basis of luck it can go either way such a contract does not require any consent such a contract does not require any skill any talent any uh, education any performance you do not actually perform the contract you do nothing it is the future uncertain event that decides so you do not have to do anything so such a contract is considered as illegal you the law says you cannot enter into such contracts it is illegal and since the contract is illegal it is void however speculative transactions are valid now why are they valid because you are using your sense of judgment because you are using your experience you think the price of infosys will go up based on past performance based on the transactions it has been based on its balance sheet based on the contracts it has received the contracts it has won so you think the price will go up now you are using your sense of judgment you are doing your analysis it is not purely on account of luck that the shares of reliance might go up there has to be some base to it some reason to it some logic to it and you are manipulating that logic you are forcing that logic so it is your skill your talent your analysis and this is why this contract is valid whereas wagering is void because it is purely a matter of chance